Hello all, I hope you're keeping well. Welcome to today, which is uh, Monday the uh, 20th of July. And as we enter the new week, uh, what a good way to start it in prayer. Um, and we're going to have a look at exactly that. Uh, a couple of uh, verses around prayer and a couple of verses around um, uh, what, what Jesus taught his disciples. So let's uh, open up in prayer. So Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity to sit at your feet even if it's just a short time, uh, that we can hear what you have to say and uh, walk in the ways that you have for us, Lord, in faith. And uh, we just uh, ask that you impregnate this word into our spirit, into our Holy Spirit. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so I've taken it from Matthew um, chapter 6. And we're going to look at the model prayer for a start. Um, and then we can move on to... Um, what it says about worrying about a uh, number of things but when we look at the model prayer i'm going to take it from chapter 6 verses 5 and when you pray you shall not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men assuredly i say to you they have their reward but you when you pray go into your room and when you have shut your door pray to your father who is in a secret place and your father, who sees in the secret, will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things that you have or need before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray, Our, heaven, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen so there we go if you forgive their trespasses your heavenly uh, your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you don't forgive the men their trespasses neither will the father forgive you so that's a quite an interesting opening model prayer uh, what jesus taught now let's have a look at the word wealth there it says prayer which is the word progressive starting with a noun which is a prayer to god that includes making a vow a word expands the verb and uh, a special term describing a request so the direction of your prayer becomes the most frequent uh, word uh, for for prayer so when we pray we look up and we pray to our heavenly father the vertical relationship is so important but now that we've had a look at the prayer let's have a look at something else that's quite important after jesus spoke about fasting same with prayer seen by god only where you lay your treasures whether it be in heaven or down on earth and the lamp of the body and also not being able to serve god and uh, riches so when we look at that it's 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 talking about choosing god or money and when we look at this kingdom dynamic the issue of money is mentioned frequently uh, because money can be the most um, uh, assiduous uh, and and uh, pervasive temptation as found in 1 timothy chapter 6 verse 10. but here in matthew 6 24 jesus teaches that the problem with wealth or riches being mammon um, is that we become mastered by it when we choose to serve mammon instead of God. The word serve here is used, to, uh, in, uh, here is used as a means to be enslaved to. And our choice to be masters, not only solely an issue of advisability, a choice of priorities, uh, nor it's a mere question of accountability, a moral choice. Rather, it is a clear issue of impossibility, no choice. You, you either serve one or the, you serve the other. You must, serve, you must choose between who you're going to serve, God or mammon. But then the other important bit is what Jesus said about not, not worrying. He says to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, about your body and what you will put on. If, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his statue? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. 
And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of, his, uh, one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? You, O oh you of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all his righteousness shall, and all these things shall be added to you. So when we have a look at that um, couple of verses, when we, when we look at worry, it means to divide into parts. Words suggest a distraction, a preoccupation with things causing anxiety or stress and pressure. And Jesus speaks against the worry and anxiety because of the watchful care of a heavenly Father who is ever mindful of our daily needs. And overcoming financial fear is something that, um, that Jesus teaches us on how to live in uncertain financial times without the stress or fear. And he goes on to say that financial fear in this kingdom dynamic is unreasonable in verse 25. And we are not to become distracted from the sub substantial issues of life over less important matters like what we will eat or wear. It is unnatural, found in uh, verse 26. We are the only creation of God who worries. God provides for the birds that he created, as we've just read. And, more and we are more valuable than they are. We are outside of God's natural design when we start to worry. Number three, it's unhelpful, found in verse 27. Worry and fear do not produce anything worthwhile. And number four, it's unnecessary. God provides for his own and promises to take care of our needs. And number five, it's unbelieving. We are acting as if God did not exist when we lived in financial fear. And our Heavenly Father knows our needs and he will provide. Now look, it doesn't uh, say that we don't have to do anything or try to contribute towards his kingdom quite the contrary because we do take steps of faith that will hopefully lead to fruitful endeavors sometimes those endeavors can be a quick return and sometimes they take a, a longer season not because of uh, of the lack of our own efforts but perhaps of outside circumstances that may prevent us from being able to move forward in the manner that we'd like to but in this as jesus says it says but seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So while we toil and continue to labor and find the opportunities that are out there to be able to uh, steward our financial resources well, we're in a time in our world that not only just individually, but corporately and globally, there are people that are going without during this time. Does it mean that you are not um, stewarding your finances well or honoring God? I doubt it. Because the Heavenly Father can see you and He knows. He knows where your heart is. As long as your heart is pure, then He can see. He can see and, and, and provide for you. And just remember the discussion that we had during yesterday's service was talking about the, the spiritual gifts and building each other up. The same applies here. But when we talk about this last kingdom dynamic, talking about seeking God's kingdom first, you know, if we put God's kingdom first, that's the first step on the pathway of God's miracles, followed by prayer. You cannot work, walk in this pathway unless determining His will, purpose, and glory. That's our first priority as we pursue His call on our lives. To do so, turn first to His word, which is the atmosphere in which you may understand His will. Recognize His way and hear His voice of the Spirit, Second, watch over for the little things and little signs along the way. Not in the great wind or the earthquake or fire, but rather in the small, still voice. Often it's the small, seemingly insignificant things or events that ultimately determine our destiny. But you know, when we, when we look at these things through prayer and seeking His face in all things, it's not easy. I understand that for you. But my prayer, and we're going to close off in a second, that my prayer is for you to be able to uh, get into the scriptures, to be able to see what he's saying and be led by the Holy Spirit. And hold fast to what you are doing and what you are working on, because the Lord will honor you in your, your efforts. 
but keep him at your, your number one and uh, in prayer put it in prayer because that's the start of something that may be able to help you in your journey to be able to steward your finances and to do what uh, the Lord has asked you to do so in closing let's pray Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord. I know that this time and this season is one of uh, difficulty and perhaps maybe a, a sense of lack of, of financial resources, Lord. But Lord, in you we trust and you we hold fast to and we keep seeking your word so that maybe you may be able to speak to us through your scriptures and speak to us in the intimate places that no one else can. So Father God, I just pray for every single person out there that is uh, struggling at the moment or looking to improve on their prayer life and also to depend and to trust in you for the provision and the resources Lord I pray that uh, they will grow stronger in their foundations and that they'll be able to give you glory as and when your will comes to pass so Heavenly Father we just prevail and we continue persevering in patience and love and kindness and we ask in your Holy Spirit just bless every single person out there Lord now more than ever so that they can see that you are the provider. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. A little bit longer than what we usually do, uh, been doing over the last couple of weeks, but I hope that's been encouraging for you. And I just want to send you love, and we'll talk again tomorrow. Love you lots. Take care.